Uh, zero expectations, thank you. Yes. Uh, I introduced myself first. Uh, so I'm Cathy Tan, a uh, year two econ student. Yeah. Okay, can you all hear from the back? Uh, I think if you cannot hear me, just raise your hand like, anytime throughout the thing. So and I'll just raise my volume. Like. So, uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> Aiden and Brian. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, very good, very good. Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then maybe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, hi everyone, uh, I'm Cathy, yeah, year two econ student. So uh, this evening I'm actually here to share on this elusive topic on finding the one in your relationship. Uh, please do not misunderstand me, I'm not here to give you any form of relationship advice, none at all. But instead I'll be using math to, uh, to show you like uh, when to stop dating and finally settle down. Uh, yeah, um, don't laugh at me. Yeah, so, uh, I introduced John. John is this student, like all you guys, like he's a university student hoping to find someone to settle down with uh, like sometime in his life. He meets Julia, but he's not sure if she's the one for him because how do you even know when you like have found the one? Or are you gonna like continue dating around? So that's like kind of like John's dilemma essentially. And we see that John's problem here is a bit similar to this thing called the secretary problem. So why is the secretary problem? It is a math problem that utilizes the optimal stopping theory to decide when to stop interviewing candidates for a secretary position to find the best one. So it's, as you can see, it's a bit similar to John's problem of finding someone to settle down with and stop dating. This problem essentially actually has four factors. Firstly, it has a single position to fill. In the original problem, right, so you're finding like one secretary to fill the, like the position, but you're interviewing multiple candidates. Whereas in John's position, he's finding someone to spend the rest of his life with, whereas he's like dating around constantly. Yes, it's a very daunting decision for John to make. And the thing is, but John has to make this decision himself. And secondly, there are no number of applicants. So it's actually in the original problem. You know how many candidates are interviewing for the secretary position. And in John's case, he kind of has to guesstimate how many people he will date throughout his life. Yeah, it's kind of hard to guesstimate, but he has to guesstimate to be able to compare them to worst, essentially. Yes, I don't laugh, yes. Thirdly, uh, applicants are interviewed randomly. So what this means is that no problem, right? Like, you don't know who you're going to interview next. And like they just walk into the room and like, okay, I'm gonna interview you now. And like in John's case, he doesn't know who's gonna date next, which is kind of normal if you think about it, right? Because you're dating Julia now, but who knows you may be dating like Mary like two months later, like God knows. Yeah. And fourthly, applicants are then accepted or rejected immediately after the interview ends. And uh, so this is based solely on the interview and the relative ranking of applicants before that. And in John's case, he only makes his decision based on dating the person and based on the past people he has dated before that. Yeah, and so essentially like, I've introduced like these four factors, right? So these four factors are supposed to come together to give you the highest probability of selecting the best applicant in the case of the secretary problem. Or in John's case, it's technically supposed to find him like the one, like the best possible person to settle down with. And it's actually a math algorithm, so you're going to end up with this magical figure, right? So what is this magical figure if you're thinking about? And the answer is actually 37%. And if you're interested, right, uh, yeah, and yes, so essentially, right, you reject the first 37% of the people you date, and the next person that comes along, technically speaking, that person is the one for you, and you have to marry them. Lah. If you're interested in the intricacies of the math, gg.gg slash I state, you can refer to that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, first, uh, I'm not going to delve into the math here. Yeah. So, but the thing is, this not, doesn't just apply to like the dating problem, it applies to like other things like um, purchase decisions, like buying a house, buying a car. And like generally, this helps to prevent you from making decisions on an impulse and like impulse accepting the first option that comes to you because it is generally found that people tend to like accept like, like make or make choices too early and which can be a problem and now you're probably thinking like uh, are you sure this even works? like a dating algorithm like how can you even like apply like something like this to like something so human like dating right yeah sure there are a few assumptions underlying this and I'm gonna talk about them now and uh, like, I'm gonna tell you like why this may not work like as effectively in real life essentially yeah, so firstly, right, number of applicants. Earlier I said like, you need to roughly be able to guesstimate the number of applicants or like the number of people you're going to date in your life. Firstly, how is that even possible, right? And sometimes it can be extremely random. People just come into your life randomly and like, okay, I guess he or she is dateable. Yeah, and like how are you able to guess like how you are, because like if you're interviewing secretaries, you'll be able to know how many people you're interviewing. Yeah, and secondly, like making decisions in isolation. Earlier I said like your decision is based solely on you dating the person plus like relative ranking of like uh, past applicants, right? But in this case, like you're probably gonna make your decision like by asking your friends as well. Like you're probably gonna be like, mm, does my friend like his face? Can my friend get along with this person? Why my friend hates his face? Then probably I may consider twice. And thirdly, like after all, dating seems quite irrational, right? It's and when you consider things like human feelings and emotions. 
it gets very complex. Like, and you, you may think about things like, oh, like there's something like uh, hindering us from getting together. Maybe we shouldn't get together. But then again, I want to get together with a person because like, nice date, right? So it gets very complicated at the end of the day and it just messes this whole thing up. And you might just think like, uh, so Kathy, you have introduced to me like this like, math algorithm. Yeah, you raised my hopes in finding the one and now you disappoint me by telling me that maybe it won't work as well. So at the end of the day, like what is happening? Like, am I gonna die alone? Uh, my answer to you is, um, uh, hopefully not. I, th I honestly don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, if you think about the optimal dating theory or algorithm, the thing is, um, surely you have to consider more factors than just like the factors that I like, uh, listed earlier, right? And if you think about it, you will probably agree with me that the permutations and combinations are really endless. And like, it's not just about strictly following the steps in the algorithm. So there are a few other side factors you may even want to consider. Firstly, like, like what I said earlier, can the person get along with your friends? And maybe even things like, do your long-term ideals even align? And lastly, like, are you even ready to be in a relationship? Just because you like going on a date with this person doesn't mean you're ready to be in a relationship, right? So all these, yes, yes. So all these factors, they come along and an ideal like, dating theory should like include these things, right? And not just like those that I mentioned earlier. But the secretary problem still has its significance, right? I mean, it does abstract like, uh, like a complicated problem. It simplifies it and helps you to see it in a rational manner because the heart of the secretary problem is that it helps you to see how you will want to make a rational decision. And I guess in things like purchase, decision, purchase decisions, it does apply, right? But when it comes to like dating, like why do I need to abstract this? I mean, if you complicate things, right? It just gets very unrealistic, it can get very like complicated, you may have high expectations, and you just be like, ah, I die alone. Ah. So at the end of the day, I guess abstraction still has its place in the world, you know? Especially like in understanding like dating. Yeah. And at the end of the day, what I want to say is right, like if any of you are brave enough to give this like uh, algorithm a try, right? Please seriously, just let me know. Like and like you may want to refer to this like gg.gg slash I stay my I really just give it a shot. I encourage you to like try it out and hopefully like use good results. Thank you.